Welcome back. It's our day two of the Prevent a Co-View Challenge. I'm in your nurse and your transformational coach. So well, how did yesterday go? Did you guys discover what's important to you right now? Able to focus on what's right in front of you? So today we're going to add to that, right? Add to our resilience tools with self-care practices. So which one are you going to choose? Which one has worked for you in the past? Yeah, maybe we can keep that going. But something that maybe you need to up level or, you know, visit that again. Which ones are we going to add to everything? So some self-care practices we have discussed. Um, a lot of these in the past. Movement, um, exercise for those of us that like more of that cardio and that actually helps us reduce some rush stress. I'm a big fan of shadow kickboxing. Um, excuse me, that is my go-to, they kind of punch things out. Um, I have a workout t-shirt that says, I work out because punching people is illegal. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. It does help me with that. Yoga, I've been on to do some yoga in the past. Tai Chi, I keep telling myself I'm going to do that. That's the one I want to add. Um, slows you down, but it's that movement of being mindful while still moving. Um, that's something I have a hard time holding still sometimes with my meditation. Even just a walk in nature, getting outside, enjoying what's out there. Uh, bath, just that warm water, Epsom salt bath to, if you're achy, a massage, reading, just grabbing a book and curling up. We're getting into the, the cooler weather around here, and there's nothing better than kind of cozying up on the couch with a book, right? Watching a movie, laughing with your friends and family, just kind of getting that endorphin going with the laugh. The meditation, there's tons of different apps out there, free ones, um, ones that you can purchase. Sleeping, that's a huge one, right? That self-care practice that a lot of us are lacking, especially if we're doing swing shifts, night shifts. Sleep kind of goes below priority a lot of times with that. Uh, breathing, right? Just that power of the breath and uh, prayer as well. There's tons more um, that are out there. Just kind of uh, learned uh, last night, one of my clients brought up that setting boundaries is a, is a type of self-care. And I'm like, yeah, that is true. We got to set those boundaries, honor those yes and no's in our life after we kind of discover what they are. But my favorite, you guys could probably guess, and I, I kind of think it's the most powerful too, is that 557 breath, that power of that breath. Found it to be very true in my own life. Um, it can really activate that parasympathetic nervous system, right? Help you become more relaxed. And guess what, it's free and it's easy to use. So why not, right? I use it when I'm feeling stressed. Um, I use it actually before I eat to kind of relax myself. So I'm gonna be in that nice relaxed state to eat, digest my food, definitely need that with some of my gut issues. And then, you know, when I'm trying to sleep at night, say my prayers and kind of go into that breath, wake up in the middle of the night, have all those running thoughts through my head, use that breath to kind of ground me again and, and hopefully get back to sleep with that. But Ethan, anytime you need to kind of get into that relaxed state, feeling the anger, feeling the anxiety, feeling the stress, take a moment, pause, just kind of breathe, right? I have a client that tells me that all the time when she encounters one of those triggers, one of those stress triggers, she's like, okay, pause and just breathe. Uh, she says it's very beneficial uh, for her as well. Meditation, kind of using that mindfulness with the breath has been a great addition for me, partly because it's forcing myself to kind of hold still. I'm a mover and a shaker and I always feel like I need to be doing something. Uh, before I started uh, meditation, I really don't think I held still at all uh, during the day. Just kept moving, find something to do, can't can't sit still. It sits still and read, sometimes, you know, sit still and watch TV, but um, nothing where my mind was like settled and not really doing anything. So a lesson for me, something I'm still working on, right? Work in progress. And the big one for me that it's okay to do nothing. It is okay to just sit still and, you know, kind of be in your in your own um, space and in your own mind and have that mindfulness around you. So, of course, today we need to practice, right? Let's practice, practice, practice. So we're going to practice that five, five, seven breath. So anytime we do that, it's an inhale of five, a hold for five, and an exhale for seven. There's very different variations with that with different numbers. Find what works best for you. I enjoy um, the five, five, seven breath. But you always want your exhale to actually be um, longer than your inhale. So I tell my client clients too, if you want to, you can think of a color. When you inhale, you want that color to fill your whole body. And when we hold it, let it go all the way to your fingertips, all the way to your toes. And then when you exhale, kind of let that color just 
exhale right out of your body. Kind of gives you a, a sensory um, part of this as well. So go ahead and get in that nice, comfortable position. Your feet on the ground, your back kind of straight, relax the shoulders. And then we're going to go ahead and inhale for two, three, four, five, and then hold it two, three, four, five, and exhale two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, inhale two, three, four, five, and hold two, three, four, five. Exhale two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, a nice big inhale, two, three, four, five, and fold it, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale, focus on the color of your eyelids, and then hold it for two, three, four, five, and then exhale completely, let out that breath. Now go ahead and inhale, two, three, four, five, and fold it, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, inhale, two, three, four, five, fold, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just keep that cycle going with an inhale, two, three, four, five, and then hold, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, letting go of all your stressors. And inhale, two, three, four, five, and fold, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Inhale, all that in inspires you, all that inspiration, and then hold, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One last big inhale, and two, three, four, Five, hold, two, three, four, five, and then exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then when you're ready, go ahead, return to that normal breath and open your eyes. So that was about two minutes. That was a 10 cycle breath. And that really will activate your parasympathetic nervous system and get you relaxed. So when you're in, in that crazy kind of state, go right to that breath. Do that 10 cycles with two minutes. If you don't have time, you can do, you know, a little less that way, even just a minute. Um, but as I said, that will kind of get everything to that relaxed state. And your brain will go, hmm, I thought I was stressed, but yeah, I guess I'm relaxed now, right? Um, those of you who did join the challenge, you do have that 5.7 five, five, audio form that you can download and um, practice, uh, you know, when you're at home or wherever. And obviously, you can replay this video as well. So where are you going to use your breath at? Have you guys thought of places when at work, when you're stressed, when you're driving in the car, maybe a little road rage, why can't they go a little faster? The power of the breath, right? Uh, when a family member is trying your patience, either at home or at work, uh, or the patient is just kind of adding to your stress, and there's one more thing coming down the line, and you just, you need that moment. You know, you can step away from the bedside, go hang out in the break room, in the bathroom, in the stairwell. Ooh, do your breath. I use the breath a lot while I'm just kind of waiting for the blood pressure cuff to pump up. Just kind of stand there and do some breathing. Anytime you need to relax, you can use this before you're eating, as I said, to kind of help you digest your food before you're going to sleep. And uh, of course, it is easy. It is free. You can use it anytime. This is a great tool for your resilience toolbox. So you can pull this out anywhere, anytime, any place, any reason. Right? So very powerful. So today, we need you to pick an accountability partner for your new self-care practice. Kind of brainstorm what one you want to add, what one you maybe want to up-level, what you want to kind of do in the next week that will challenge yourself but give you something that you can add to your toolbox, right? Obviously, the breath, you can uh, use that one, but any one you want to, you want to pick accountability partner. It can be someone that's in the group. It could be someone you know, but really review your plan, let them know what your self-care practice is, and then kind of Find a way to do a daily check-in for some accountability. Make sure you're actually doing it and challenging yourself. So comment below and on the other posts. Let us know your plan, your accountability partner's name. And if you need help, you need an accountability partner, I'm always here. Feel free uh, to message me. So remember to join me tomorrow, uh, day three, the Prevent a Code U Challenge. Um, I'll be live again at 10.15. 
And then remember Saturdays, um, the strategy Saturday will just be the challenge event. So we'll be coming to you Saturday at 1015 as well. So make sure you uh, get your accountability partner that you post below and I will see you all tomorrow.